So we're looking at how to use the transmitter uh, for a DJI Spark. How do you actually use this thing? And what do all these buttons do? How can you best use it? And what should you never do when you use this controller? So let's get right into it. Firstly, you'll notice I've taken this all apart and you know unfolded it. Uh, when it's actually folded up, it's quite compact. So the first thing you want to do is just take out these handholds here, make sure that they're nice and wide apart so that if you do put a phone in like this, it can hold them nicely and comfortably. Now you don't actually need to have a phone in this to fly it, okay? But just for this video, we're gonna put the phone in here like this and show you how it all looks. So, you've got your phone in there. Uh, now what you'll notice is the aerials here, the antennae, I should say, are aimed so that one is pointing that way, right? I don't know if you can see this. One is pointing that way, and the other one here is pointing this way. Now, the temptation will be when you first unfold them is to just have them both pointing forward like this. You get better reception if you turn them so that they're actually facing opposite ways and then make sure that they're parallel, as close as you can get to parallel and just angled slightly upwards like this. That's the best reception you're gonna get. So, let's just move right into it. So to turn it on and off, obviously you press this once and then press it again and hold it down. So press it once to check the battery and press and hold to turn it on or off. And you need to wait for all the lights to light up and then it'll make a little sound. Now the red flashing light here, this means it's not connected. When it's connected to the spark, it will flash green or it will be a solid green, okay? So if we just look at the buttons, we'll start here. Now, I'll just take this out actually because this is a Samsung and it's sort of, it's a bit slippery and it tends to slip out of this case a bit. Uh, so the best phone really for this is like an iPhone 7 or an 8 or something. Anyway, so here, this is the film recording button. This will start and stop your film. It will automatically start recording the, on the SD card of the Spark if you've got one in there. If you haven't got an SD card in here, which by the way, you put in just here, you just lift this flap up and you can put an, a micro SD card in there. If you haven't got one, it will just start recording to the phone. Now bear in mind that most phones can only hold a certain amount of video and this is shooting in 1080p, so it's gonna use up your memory pretty quickly. Anyway, that's to start and stop the video. This wheel here, just make sure it's in focus for you. Uh, pulling this that way, so towards your right hand, I think, I believe, moves the gimbal down and then pulling it up moves the gimbal up uh, or the other way around, I can't quite remember. Uh, but you'll, you, you'll fa fairly quickly get used to how it works. So one of them will do that, will move the gimbal down, one will move it up like that, okay? Now, so here you've got the photo button. I don't really use this too much because you're shooting in 1080p, right? So if you just film the whole flight, you can always take a picture from the video later. And that, you know, you don't have to worry about taking a picture then. You can just move it around and then take a picture of the best bits. So that's, that's what that button does. This is a custom button. You can customize this one to do what you want uh, within the app. The same with this one, which is the function button, FN. So then you've got return to home here. Now, there's a few warnings we need to talk about with this return to home button. If you press this, you need to make sure you know what it's gonna do. It will either, okay, make the drone return to a point on the map that you've specified, or that is set by default, or it will return to you where, where you're holding the controller. It's uh, customizable, so you need to make sure you know where home is, otherwise the drone could fly back to your house. Like say if you're using Active Track and you're walking down towards a field, you take off from the end, one edge of the field and then you, it tracks you all the way down the road and you press the return to home, you need to know whether it's gonna to come to you holding the controller or where you took off from. So another thing with the return to home is that it will automatically, usually by default, return to home when it's either out of battery or it's lost connection. So again, you need to make sure you know where home is and you need to make sure the drone knows where home is. So then you've got pause. Now this red pause button here will immediately stop any smart features of the drone. So if you've got this set to active track or to gesture control or return to home or whatever it is, pressing this pause button once will stop the drone and it'll hover in place. So if it's returning to home, it'll just hover and then you can control it using the thumbsticks as normal, okay? Now, sport mode. This is more of a switch than a button. So you switch it like this and it's now in sport mode. This will almost triple the speed. All of your inputs will be uh, amplified and it'll be a lot faster to control. Now, I wouldn't do that unless you know how to control a drone and you understand you know, 
throttle is on the left if that's how you've got it set up and then you've got your movements on the right if you're not used to this you know you can panic when it's in sport mode and you can try and go forward it goes forward too fast so you pull back and then you know you're in a bit of a mess so use this if you know how to fly a drone if not just keep it in normal mode move around slowly and just get used to it so we talked about the power button this is the hold for the phone this little switch uh, little port here is for the micro usb port which can charge this the battery on this lasts a long time by the way it lasts a good six to eight hours i found um, but you can obviously charge it here using your using a power pad your laptop usb whatever and that pretty much on the controller is it obviously you've got the thumbsticks as well uh, now the default setup is that this one the right hand side one will move the drone so if I if I just try and show you, if I move this forward, the drone will move forward, backwards like this, left, right in the air. Now the other one, I'm just going to swap hands so you can see it. This one, so moving it up, moves the drone up, down. If you let if you let go, it will hover in place. If you turn it to the right, it will twist like this. Uh, sorry, to the left, I mean. And if you turn it to the right, it will twist like that. So that's that's pretty much the basics of the controlling of the drone. Um, and yeah, that's how you use this transmitter. Uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll teach you one quick cinematic sort of trick, I guess you could say. If you're trying to get a nice shot of something going backwards, what you can do is line up the shot so the drone is looking at what you want it to, to take a uh, video of. And then on the controller here, slowly push this one back, the right hand side one back, and this one forward. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna slowly bring the drone up and back like this so we get a nice panning shot and what I'll do is I'll put a clip of that panning shot here and that's it guys I hope you enjoyed the video please make sure to subscribe and if you haven't actually got spark yet there'll be a link in the description which you can get a great price on it and I'll see you next time